بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. All praises for Allah subhanahu wa taala, who prescribed the prayers for his slaves with great wisdom and solemn secrets. Furthermore, he made them be immense for the minor sins that are committed in between them. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship save Allah alone subhanahu wa taala, having no partners, the possessor of greatness, might, and power. I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and messenger, the leader of the pure and pious. May peace and prayer be upon him, his family, and his companions. Brothers and sisters, there is a great wisdom behind the commandments by which Allah subhanahu wa taala prescribed these forms of worship and prohibited us from drawing close to the causes of sin and wrongdoing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not command us to worship him because he needed us. He does not stand in need of anything in existence. He commanded us to do so because we need him. Our life's affairs will not be straight, nor will our earthly and spiritual matters without relying on him. Furthermore, the forms of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for us will make our bodies become healthier and our hearts and souls to become more righteous. These prayers benefit the individuals as well as the groups and nations. As the hearts and souls become righteous, the bodies shall grow healthy and good. In this regard, the Prophet said, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudghatun. Ida saluhat, saluhal jasadu kulluhu. Wa ida fasadat, fasadal jasadu kulluhu. Allah wa hiyal qalb. Indeed, in the body there is an organ. If it is well, the whole body shall be well. Yet if it is deceased, the whole body shall be deceased. Verily, it is the heart. It is not a deniable fact that we certainly are in need of our Lord and are compelled to be near to Him. One cannot possibly do without Him. We could never manage our life without Him, even for as short a time as the blink of the eye. So we must worship Him, thank Him, and keep mention of Him. He prescribed the forms of worship that would protect us and draw us closer and closer to him, and for which we would deserve the reward. He made the five prayers incumbent upon us in order to purify and cleanse our heart from all wrongdoings. These prayers are the links between the person and his creator. They are also the cleansing and purification of the person inwardly and outwardly. When a person intends to pray, he purifies himself inwardly and outwardly and stands in front of his Lord with peace and humility. He shall not turn his head or his face away. His heart shall be connected with Allah, and he shall be facing the house of Allah. Thus, he is directed towards his Lord physically and spiritually. At the same time, he is reciting with contemplation what his Lord says of commandments and prohibitions, as well as the best of stories that carry within them lessons and admonishment. Should a verse of mercy be recited, he would look forward to the favors and rewards of Allah. This would lead him to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy and favors upon him. If then a verse of warning is recited, he becomes fearful of torture and seeks refuge with his Lord from punishment. After that, he bows, bending his back and lowering his head in glorification for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says and again repeats, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Far is my Lord, the Almighty, from all imperfection. He says so while contemplating the might of the one against which no difficulty can stand, the one to whose glory all the four heads are bowing and submitting. Thus, in the process of prayer, the person glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart, with his tongue, and in the movements of his body. He glorifies his Lord with his body and soul, adhering to his commandments and the commandments of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hajj, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu rka'u wasjudu wa'budu. O you who have believed, bow down and prostrate yourselves. And after this ayah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Fasabbih bismi rabbika al-azim. So glorify the name of your Lord, the Most Great. The Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ij'aluha fi ruku'ikum. Say it in your ruku'. 
while in the position of bowing. The worshipper then rises and stands erect. While standing, he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanks him for his abundant favors and magnificent attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed praiseworthy for every state man is in, whether good or bad. Every creature in every tongue praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, the worshipper prostrates, putting his highest and most regarded part of his body, his forehead, on the ground. His limbs, hands, feet, and knees are all at one level on the ground. None is higher than the other. Only then does he remember and think of the one who is always high and who is far away from being low, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He shall then call upon the name of Al-A'la, the Most High. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Most High in Himself and in His attributes. Allah's attributes are above all attributes. They are the Most Perfect. For this and for being so humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person shall be the closest to his Lord while prostrating. Therefore, it is advised that he ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything he wants. Explaining this, the Prophet وسلم, said, وَأَمَّا السَّجُودُ فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الدُّعَى In your sujood, while prostrating, increase your invocation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it is worthy to be answered. After this prostration and what it implicates of humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the worshipper sits in a submissive manner, puts his palms on his legs, and asks his Lord for forgiveness, mercy, and health. The worshipper then continues to do the same deeds in his prayer, moving from one position to another in a systemic manner, until the end of the prayer. Thereupon, he concludes his prayer by praising and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what befits him, saying, Greetings, prayers, and purity are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he offers salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and himself as well as to every pious slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever existed in heaven and earth. After this, he recites the prayers and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and towards the end, he asks Allah to give him refuge from harm in this world and in the hereafter, saying, I seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of hell, the torture of the grave, the temptation of this world, the trial of death, and the temptation and trial of the false messiah. Thereafter, he is free to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything he wishes. When a Muslim prays, he travels through the gardens of worship. He moves along from one position to another, be it standing, bowing, sitting, or prostrating, and says his prayers in these different positions. He recites the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeps mention of his names, and asks him for everything he needs and wishes. Throughout all of this, his heart is connected with his Lord. What could possibly be better than this bounty? What state of being could be more solemn and pleasant? For this, the prayer has become a joy for all of the believers and their matter of delight. For those who constantly keep remembrance of their Lord, the prayer keeps their hearts alive. The prayer is thus fruitful for the great influence it has on the life of Muslim. Thus the person will come out with a different heart from that which he entered the prayer with. His heart will be full of light and happiness, delighted and full of joy. His heart will also be open to Islam and inclined to the good and, on the other hand, despising the evil. In this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabud, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Verily, a salat, that is the prayer, prevents from al-fahsha, great sins and indecency of every kind, and al-munkar, that is every kind of disreputable and evil wicked deed. With such consequences, and these of this kind, worship is worth making great efforts to accomplish, and should become the aim of our sight and the issue of our thoughts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all keep remembering Him, praising Him, and worshiping Him correctly, and to give us refuge from the devil's whisperings, and to help us reject Him. We we'll finally ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us fulfill the meaning of this verse, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, 
حافظوا على الصلوات والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين Guard strictly five obligatory prayers, especially the middle salat, and stand up to Allah, truly devout.